Hi guys, I'm Yogita Kandelwal and in this lesson we will deal with scrotum and penis in human male reproductive system. For more lessons on biology, follow me on an academy and here's the link. Scrotum. So we have, uh, scrotum is a supporting reproductive structure in males. It is extra abdominal pouch as we already know it is extra abdominal and there is a scrotal septa which divides uh, it into two testicular sac and each testicular sac has its one testis. So there is scrotal septa dividing it into two testicular sac. Now uh, the margins of scrotum attaches testis by cord of connective tissue that is known as gubernaculum and uh, as we have already seen in our, the pictures previous in our previous lessons, the cord of connective tissue that attaches testis is to scrotum is gubernaculum. Now, mesorchium, mis, whenever the term mis comes, it refers to connective tissue and orchium stands for tested. So, connective tissue connecting the testis is mesorchium, that is the gubernaculum. Now, Scrotal wall and scrotal septa is formed of smooth muscle called datos muscle. So we have datos muscles forming scrotal wall and scrotal septa and contraction of datal muscle tightens the scrotal skin which prevents heat loss. As, uh, as the skin tightens it uh, reduces the surface area and thus prevents the heat loss and it moves tested towards the body or scrotum towards the body. Now, uh, within scrotum, sperm conducting duct, that is reti testes, vas deferens, epididymis, blood vessels and nerves, blood vessels, uh, that is testicular artery vein forming the plexus, they are all enveloped in a membrane called spermatic cord. So, these, these, these are the contents of spermatic cord, that is sperm conducting duct, blood vessels and nerves. Now, what is spermatic cord made up of? It is formed of connective tissue and cremaster muscles. So, we have uh, deal with two muscles. First is datos muscles that forms scrotal wall and scrotal septa and cremaster muscles which forms spermatic cord. Now, contraction of cremaster muscles move testis towards body and the contraction of datos muscles was also moving testis towards the body. So that's why the position of testis and scrotum is maintained by, uh, is regulated by contraction of these two muscles. Now contraction in these two muscles that is datos muscles and cremastral muscles occur in response of low temperature. So whenever there is low temperature in an environment contraction of these muscles occur to prevent heat loss and it also occurs during sexual excitement. See this is the external view of scrotum this is the raphe that is the thick tissue here present then uh, see this is scrotal septum divides scrotum into two uh, testicular sac containing testis these are the cremaster muscles forming spermatic cord and these are the datos muscles that form scrotal septa and the scrotal wall now see these are the deep tissues, this is the testis, these are the content of spermat that is blood vessels, nerves uh, and the ductus difference or vas difference. Next is penis, the second supporting uh, reproductive structure in males. Now we all know it is an external genitalia, it is muscular copulatory organ, thus it has no bones and it houses penile urethra. So the part of Urethra present in penis is known as penile urethra. Now the tip of penis is called glans penis. Remember it and it is formed of only corpus spongiosum that is single cylinder of erectile tissue. Now these loose retractile fold of skin present on glans penis is called foreskin or prepuce. So uh, the glans penis has foreskin or prepuce and the blaze of glans penis is known as corona. Now the shaft the, we have discussed the tip of penis that is glans penis. Now the shaft of penis it has three cylinder of erectile tissues on from in which one is paired that is corpora cavernosa and one is uh, single that is corpus spongiosum. 
So whenever the term am comes, it means singular, and when is the a comes, it is plural. So cavernosa, it is plural. Spongiosum, it is singular. Similarly, corpora, a, it is plural, and corpus, us, is singular. So paired corpora cavernosa, it forms dorsolateral part of penis, and it corpus spongiosum forms midventral part of penis, and uh, we uh, corpus. Pineal urethra is located in corpus spongiosum. So uh, there is two features of corpus spongiosum. First, it is it is the only tissue which is present in glans penis, and it houses pineal urethra. Now see, this is this uh, T S of the uh, see this one is the pineal urethra or the spongy urethra. This is and this is external urethral meatus. Inside, this is corpus spongiosum. and this one these are the two cylinder of erectile tissue that is corpora cavernosa this is the shaft of penis and this one is the glans penis that is the tip of penis now this this is foreskin of prepuce on the glans penis uh now see it is the cross section ts of the penis now this is shaft penis so it has corpora cavernosa two cylinders and one is corpora spongiosum and this is the tunica albugina while in glans penis we have corpus spongiosum only and this is the penile urethra now corpus spongiosum is present in midventral and this corpus cavernosa is present in dorsolateral portion now near corona that is the base of glans penis prepucial gland or tyson gland is present it is an extremely important gland because it is a modified sebaceous gland and this gland secretes a uh, waxy secretion that is known as smegma which helps in sliding of foreskin at the tips of penis so it acts as smoothing agent now the presence of smegma makes penis prone to fungal infection so because of this smegma it is prone to fungal infection circumcision now it is surgical removal of foreskin now this is uh, religiously done in muslim and jews in young generally in young it can be done in adults but it is surgical remove of coarse foreskin now myth associated with this circumcision is that it prevent occurrence of stds that is sexually transmitted diseases which is not true it does not have any such effect Uh, it is only the myth associated with this. Next, we have erection of penis, which is caused by parasympathetic stimulation to facilitate insemination. Now, uh, for insemination, we have parasympathetic. Remember, it is parasympathetic, not sympathetic stimulation. Now, this uh, uh, parasympathetic stimulation releases nitric oxide, which is a very powerful vasodilator which increases blood supply and causes the erection to facilitate insemination so that's all for this lesson thanks for watching